There is a substantial requirement in the industry for many reasons. Um, uh, the industry requires the robots to produce products so that we can become globally competitive. And it's expected about from us or from our industry that the products we produce are produced to the same standards that they are in the foreign markets. The South African economy, unfortunately, at the moment is very depressed. So there's not a lot of huge investment, hence not a lot of exports. Other than to a reasonable extent, the automotive industry, who are still investing and have trust and belief in the South African economy going into the future. So as soon as we can get our economy sorted, our politics sorted, people will start investing in capital equipment, new plants, which will have a ripple effect into the usage of robots um, and enhance their capability to be competitive globally. I don't think you'll change the entire industry, but you will enhance the ability of a lot of companies to produce faster, cheaper, consistent quality, and those types of aspects. Um, more and more robotics are now becoming user-friendly, human-friendly. We talk about collaborative robots, where the robot works together with a person without harming the person, but assisting the person. So that is a new development on the horizon. We already have such machines. Robots are becoming more intelligent by having um, vision systems attached to them, so that besides doing what they've been programmed to do, they can also make certain decisions by what the robot cameras are seeing. Again, making it easier to program there's more and more offline programming where um, engineers can, at a remote location, program the actual robots to perform various tasks. Because often in a car plant or another factory, if you have a robot producing 24 hours around the clock, you don't have time to stop the robot to reprogram it. So it's convenient then to have an offline programming package where you can prepare the programs while the robots are running, and then during the night or shutdown periods or whatever, you can download new programs. I've had a substantially long relationship with the Institute. I've been a member for going on, I guess, 25 to 30 years. Chris Smallbone, the original Mr. South African Institute of Welding, was a good friend of mine. And I have been a member since then. Um, I've been honoured with awards from the Institute um, mm -hmm. and uh, various other things. So we, we have a good relationship mm -hmm. and we continue with this relationship in terms of trying to support them, also to utilise their facilities for educating our people mm -hmm. in the welding industry. Mm -hmm. uh, importantly so because Yaskawa robots predominantly in the world are used for welding. Mm -hmm. And without good welding people behind the robot, the robot could never weld. So for us, it's a very important link. Okay? Um, we are currently in discussion with the Institute whereby we're going to be giving them a complete robot welding system, high technology, production type machine, not a table model toy. And we trust that they will be able to then offer courses to their current welding students where these students have the will and the wherewithal to progress past just welding to become robotic welding technicians. Mm. So this we're hoping is going to grow into something more substantial. Followed that by that we would then offer the institute what we would call postgraduate advanced and master's diplomas in welding and robotic programming. So that's the broad outline of our thinking. And thereafter, once this is up and running, which we believe could take a year or two, we will start looking at enterprise development, where we try and develop key students who have come through the 
process of welding and robotic education to become their own man, to have their own business, and to offer their facility to the industry. And obviously part of, partner with some of these industrial players. So it's a very ambitious plan, but I believe it can work with the right people behind it.